Welcome to this overview of the National Youth in Transition Database, also known as NIDID, which includes a review of what the survey is and why Wisconsin partakes, who is eligible to take the survey and when, survey administration, including the importance of outreach and collaboration, documentation requirements, and more. The purpose of this presentation is to help county, tribal, and regional agency partners better understand NIDID and learn more about the role they play to make the survey a successful tool. NIDID is a national survey created to allow the federal government and states to learn more about the longer-term outcomes for youth who experience out-of-home care. In this presentation, I may use the term foster care synonymously with out-of-home care. Both collectively refer to foster care as well as congregate care settings like group homes. This is because at both the state and federal levels, foster care is used as an umbrella term to capture the population of youth placed out of home. NIDID is the only national survey targeted at capturing this type of information on such a broad scale. It offers an unprecedented opportunity to collect information directly from young people and use their feedback to positively inform policy and practice. All responses remain anonymous and are analyzed in aggregate. All states are required to administer NIDID surveys at specific points in eligible youth's lives. We will get into that later in this presentation. NIDID data is reviewed in combination with the independent living services a state provides. NIDID primarily collects information youth provide related to employment, educational attainment, housing, positive adult connections, access to health care and insurance, and more. Because NIDID is interwoven with independent living, it is funded with Chafee dollars. DCF has been collecting NIDID data since October of 2010. The agency has a website dedicated to NIDID, which includes more information, including a frequently asked questions document that complements this presentation. The only people who truly know what it is like to be in foster care are the young people who have experienced it. Youth input is the cornerstone of the NIDID survey requirement and process, and it is important that we hear directly from them. We will take a few minutes to watch a video created by the Federal Administration for Children and Families to highlight NIDID's importance. This video can be a resource when talking about NIDID with the youth you serve. It is also available on DCF's NIDID page. Let's watch. Got out of um, high school, graduated with uh, high honors, and basically got out of child welfare, welfare system. I packed my little VW Golf up and drove cross country. I moved into independent living. I had a roommate, and I had to go to school and hold down a job and do laundry and go grocery shopping. I'm a sophomore um, in college. Um, I just bought my first car. Um, and I live in an apartment, um, have a job. NIDID is really important because we need to capture the outcomes for transition-aged youth. Traditionally, they're a population that's looked over or they sort of disappear and they don't have a lot of oversight and they don't get a lot of services. I think the United Survey pretty much is beneficial on allowing the kids to see, you know, that somebody's out, actually out there, you know, that cares about them, cares what's going on in life, you know, from before they turn 18 until after they actually get out of the system. For um, most of the youth that I present the United um, survey too, I let them know that it's important because they might have siblings or other people that they know that they um, that grew up in care that those services can be improved for and as well as they they are the ones that can really are the only ones that can make that change because they lived and experience those services. So if that change isn't coming from the people that experience them, then there isn't gonna be change at all. I took it when I was 17. 
um, for the first time and I really didn't know what it was. <laughs> I was just handed a survey like, okay, you have to complete this survey within the next couple of days and I was like, okay, I'll fill it out. And I was like, oh, well, this is asking some really um, interesting questions in terms of like my situation in foster care. So I felt as if, as if I had a voice of my own in terms of letting people know what I've actually experienced, you know, and what services um, I was being provided as a youth in foster care. There's a saying, garbage in, garbage out. And so if you do not take the survey, we don't have that data in order to make the correct decisions, in order to make the improvements that's needed. Um, it's easy to get in front of someone and say, I think the foster care system needs X or, or Y. But when you have data to show that 95% of the youth need financial education, then we can actually do something with that data and make an improvement. NIDID's finally starting to pick up the pace and getting to where we can really use it and do something with it. And, um, and it's something that I think uh, I look forward to seeing what NIDID can do as it goes on because it's already starting to do things for youth that are pretty inc incredible to me. Help us get that critical data. Youth voices need to be heard. Take the NIDID survey. Come on, take the survey. Express your voice. Use your voice. Take the NIDID survey. Take it and take it accurately. So please, take the NIDID survey. Seriously. Take the survey. As referenced in the video we just played, states are required to collect outcomes data on youth in two reporting populations, the baseline population and the follow-up population. The baseline population is made up of all youth who turn 17 while in a qualifying out-of-home care placement or who are in a qualifying placement for any time during the 45 days following their 17th birthday. The young person must complete their survey within 45 days of their 17th birthday. Under this structure, each 17-year-old who qualifies to take the survey has their own window in which to do so. This is different than the follow-up populations, which have distinct time periods for all qualifying youth. The follow-up population is made up of all young people who completed the survey as part of the baseline population of 17-year-olds. If a young person was eligible to take the survey at age 17, but did not do so, then they will not be included in the follow-up population. Unlike the baseline population, which has a variable window for young people, and equally no more than 45 days, young people in the follow-up population must complete their survey within one of two six-month reporting periods, depending on where their birthday falls during the year. The two reporting periods are October 1st through March 31st and April 1st through September 30th. So a young person who completed the survey at age 17 and whose 19th or 21st birthday falls on November 20th, for example, will complete the follow-up survey at any point between October 1st and March 31st. Likewise, a young person who completed the survey at age 17 and whose 19th or 21st birthday falls on July 8th, for example, will complete the follow-up survey at any point between April 1st and September 30th. Because of how this time frame works, outreach begins before a young person is officially 19 or 21 and they may complete the survey while still age 18 or 20. That is okay, so long as they complete the survey during the designated six-month time frame. Note that even if a young person does not complete the survey at age 19, they are contacted to complete the survey at age 21. They are considered part of that follow-up cohort because they completed the initial survey at age 17, regardless of whether they participated as a 19-year-old. This slide describes how a young person completes their survey. As you can see, the method is similar regardless of baseline or follow-up population, with one exception. Because the window in which a 17-year-old must complete the survey is so much smaller compared to that for 19 and 21-year-olds who are eligible, there is no paper survey option for 17-year-olds. We will go into outreach related to each of these cohorts in a bit. It is important to remember that at no time shall an adult supporter complete the survey for a young person. Knighted responses must be completed by the young people themselves. 
To ensure that a diverse range of youth experiences are captured through the survey, the federal government has established required participation rates for each of the knighted cohorts. States must achieve an 80% participation or compliance rate for youth who are in out-of-home care and eligible to take the survey. This is the 17-year-old cohort. They must also have a 60% compliance rate for youth who are eligible to take the survey and are no longer in out-of-home care. These are the 19 and 21-year-old cohorts. States that do not meet these thresholds may be penalized by having their annual Chafee dollars allocation reduced by 1 to 5%. These dollars finance states' independent living programs and other youth initiatives. In addition, states must submit all data using specific data file formats and accuracy standards. This is done through a federal database specific to NIDID. Since 2013, the Wisconsin Department of Children and Families has partnered with the University of Wisconsin Survey Center, or UWSC, to administer the NIDID survey. UWSC, which is part of the University of Wisconsin-Madison campus, has significant experience administering surveys to specific populations. Its staff take the lead on contacting 17, 19, and 21-year-olds who qualify to take the NIDID survey. They also contact caseworkers and independent living coordinators when a survey is due for a youth in their county or region. For 19 and 21 year olds, they may also contact collateral contacts who the young person identified on their 17 year old survey as being valuable points of contact. UWSC then receives and documents all survey data. We will go into each of these topics on the following slides. In this presentation, IL coordinator refers to the regional independent living worker. We know some counties have their own distinct IL coordinator, but all county workers are referred to as worker or caseworker in this overview to distinguish the difference. The UW Survey Center has access to certain EWISACRIS reports that allow them to pull youth eligibility and contact information. The reports include information about which 17, 19, and 21-year-olds qualify for the survey, when the survey is due as it relates to their birthday, the youth's contact information, and the worker or IL coordinator affiliated with the youth's county or region. UWSC typically pulls information for the 17-year-old cohorts about one to two weeks before the start of the month in which the youth's birthday falls. For 19 and 21-year-old cohorts, their survey center pulls information in mid-September and mid-March, both about two weeks before the beginning of the two reporting periods. While UW Survey Center is the first and primary point of contact for youth taking the NIDID survey, caseworkers and IL coordinators play a significant role as well. In short, the Survey Center will be more effective in finding youth if workers and coordinators continue to engage with young people to ensure that they are engaged in services and, at a minimum, that the young person's information is up to date in EWISACWIS. The Survey Center relies on having a youth's most recent contact information in order to successfully connect with them. This includes an address, phone number, and email address. For 19 and 21 year olds, the Survey Center recommends making sure contact information is up to date at least two weeks before the reporting periods begin in early September and early March. If a youth is eligible for independent living services following time in care and is transitioning from a county to a regional agency, it is important that the county worker inputs the most up-to-date contact information for the youth and their collateral contacts, more on that later, into EWISACWIS. This is crucial to NIDID outreach and also important for the regional agency to successfully contact and engage youth eligible for services. This slide outlines UWSC's contact protocol for 17-year-olds. The Survey Center contacts youth directly through a series of letters and then through phone calls. If a youth completes the survey, they receive $20. In addition to reaching out to the youth directly, the UW Survey Center also sends emails to the youth's workers. It retains a list of the applicable contacts according to the youth's county. As noted on this slide, UWSC sends the first email on the youth's 17th birthday and includes a link that the youth can use to access the survey. Each link is unique to each youth. If the survey is not completed after a few weeks, UWSC sends a second email. 
specifically asking for any updated contact information because current outreach efforts are not proving to be successful. The worker should make any contact updates in EWSAQUIS and email the new information to UWSC. If the youth still has not completed the survey one week before it's due, UWSC will send a third email that asks the worker to mark a reason for non-completion in EWSAQUIS. Outreach emails from UWSC are automated and are sent unless the survey center has a completed survey for a given youth or has otherwise received verifiable information that outreach should not continue. When a young person is in care, out-of-home care providers are also valuable partners during the nighted process. This is because they are with the young person most of the time and are central to their care and supervision. Therefore, it is necessary that the youth's worker collaborates with their out-of-home care provider. They should do so by completing the steps outlined on this slide. Forward the email with the survey link to the facility manager or relevant staff. Be sure to only share the link for the young person or people residing at the facility. Remember, each link is unique to a given youth. Let the provider know that UWSC may call the facility to ask the young person to complete the survey on the phone and that the young person should be permitted to do so. Remind the provider that at no time should a staff member complete the survey for the young person, nor should they include their own contact information on the survey. More on that on the next slide. The end of the nighted survey asks for the young person's contact information. This is done for several reasons to send them the $20 for completing the survey, to contact them again in two years to complete the next survey, which is not applicable for 21-year-olds completing a survey, and to provide the information back to DCF, which can help with outreach to the youth about services for which they are eligible, which is applicable to 19 and 21-year-olds. For these reasons, individuals who know the youth, including those who may have assisted or helped to facilitate the youth's completion, should not list their contact information. Doing so will interfere with UWSC's ability to provide compensation to and reach out to youth. Because young people can be transient, it helps to have more than one point of contact when conducting outreach. For this reason, the 17 and 19-year-old NIDID surveys also ask the participant to identify two family members or friends who can help UWSC contact them in the future. These are collateral contacts and should not include the youth's worker or IL coordinator unless that person expects to stay in close contact with the youth until age 21. It is best for the youth to list close family members or friends who have stable contact information. UWSC will only contact the collateral contacts to help locate the young person for the purposes of completing the NIDID survey. The survey center will not ask any other information about the youth and will not share any survey responses with these contacts when the youth completes the survey. The contact protocol for 19 and 21 year olds is similar to the protocol for 17 year olds, but is a bit more robust. It is done through a combination of letters, emails, and phone calls. Also, as already mentioned, it takes place over a six-month reporting period rather than the 45-day window for 17-year-olds. This is because these older youth are typically out of care and may be harder to track down in order to secure their participation. The 19 and 21-year-olds must complete the survey regardless of the current status of their case or order, so regardless of whether they are in extended care or off in order and whether or not they receive IL services at the county or regional level. Like the 17-year-olds, all eligible youth receive $5 at time of initial outreach and an additional $20 when they complete the survey. Similar to the 17-year-olds, outreach is also extended to workers who may be familiar with the young person eligible for the survey and who may be able to help facilitate their participation. For 19 and 21 year olds, this person is often the regional IL coordinator. As with the baseline population, UWSC retains a list of the applicable contact according to the youth's county and or region. To increase the likelihood that a 19 or 21 year old will complete the NIDID survey, DCF and UWSC share outreach efforts related to this population. 
DCF staff work closely with UWSC on outreach to this follow-up population, since some youth will be eligible for regional services and connected to a regional IL worker, and some will not. DCF staff distinguish these two groups using information from EWISACWIS to help direct outreach. Outreach for youth not eligible for regional independent living services continues to go to their county worker, since that is the most recent worker for whom DCF has information and with whom the youth may still be connected. As noted on the slide, emails are sent approximately one week, two months, and five months into the six month reporting period. If a worker is aware of new contact information for a young person, they should update it in EWISACWIS and email the new information to UWSC. If the youth does not complete the survey, the worker shall mark a reason for non-completion in EWISACWIS. Outreach emails from UWSC are automated and are sent unless the survey center has a completed survey for a given youth or has otherwise received verifiable information that outreach should not continue. Remember how 17 and 19 year olds are asked to provide information about collateral contacts at the end of their survey? This is why. UWSC uses collateral contact information when reaching out to those same youth later on as 19 and 21 year olds. Often the follow-up population is difficult to connect with and collateral contacts are an important group to help facilitate their participation. As already noted, UWSC will only contact collateral contacts to help locate the young person for the purposes of completing the NIDID survey. It does not share or request additional information about the contact or the youth. There are a number of reasons why a young person may be unable to participate in the NIDID survey. We will walk through these on this slide and those that follow. Remember, if a young person is unable to participate, the worker or IL coordinators must mark the reason why in EWISACWIS before the respective reporting period ends. The survey center does not have the ability to enter this information. This slide mostly pertains to the 17-year-old cohort. For youth who are AWOL or missing from care, the UWSC still continues outreach efforts until the survey due date. If the youth returns to care during the reporting period, the worker or IL coordinator should refer to the communication they received from UWSC with the unique link for the youth, pass that on if the youth does not have it themselves, and help facilitate the youth's completion of the survey by the due date. As a reminder, the worker should never do the survey for the young person. If the youth does not return during the reporting period, the worker or IL coordinator shall mark runaway missing as the reason for non-completion of the survey on the outcomes tab of the youth's independent living page in EWISACWIS. Another reason why a young person may be unable to complete the survey is because they are incarcerated. There is an important distinction between the different cohorts in this regard. 17-year-olds who are not in a qualifying placement on their 17th birthday or any of the 45 days after turning 17 because they are in detention are not eligible to take the NIAID survey. However, 19 or 21 year olds who are incarcerated during their reporting period remain eligible to take the survey. In the event a 19 or 21 year old is incarcerated and eligible for the survey, the worker or IL coordinator shall inform UWSC of the young person's incarceration status and location if it is known. The survey center will use that information to mail a paper copy of the survey. If the individual completes the survey, they will receive $20 in their commissary account. If they do not complete the survey, the worker or IL coordinator shall mark incarcerated as the reason for non-completion of the survey on the outcomes tab of the youth's independent living page in EWISACWIS. DCF and its federal partners are interested in outcomes information for all youth, including those who have limited physical and or mental capacities. If a youth has developmental delays or otherwise may have difficulty completing the survey, a parent, caregiver, coordinator, case manager, or other supportive individual can help them. This may be done in a number of ways, including but not limited to reading the question slowly, providing additional explanations for the questions or terms used, providing more time, 
and or entering the youth's responses on the youth's behalf. It is essential that even if a young person requires additional help, they can and do choose their own answers. At no time should an adult supporter complete the survey for a young person. If, even with help, a youth cannot complete the survey, the worker or IL coordinator shall mark incapacitated as the reason for non-completion of the survey on the outcomes tab of the youth's independent living page in EWISACWIS. On occasion, a youth may have passed away since the last survey was administered. In these situations, it is important that UWSC know so that they can stop outreach to workers and or collateral contacts. Continued outreach may be upsetting or even traumatizing, and we want to avoid that. If a worker or IL coordinator is aware that a young person is deceased, they should notify the UW Survey Center. They should also select death as the reason for non-completion of the survey on the outcomes tab of the youth's independent living page in EWSACWIS. The only way for NIDA to be successful is for it to be a coordinated effort. This includes collaboration between DCF and the UW Survey Center, as well as collaboration with young people and the agencies that serve them. Additionally, as already mentioned, NIDID presents an exceptional opportunity to collect and analyze data from young people across the country who are in and transitioning from foster care. This information can positively inform, influence, and shape policies and practices. Agencies and staff working directly with young people are in the unique position to play a central role in ensuring that youth eligible to complete the NIDID survey do so since those youth can best speak to how the child welfare system serves them and how it can be improved. These combined efforts can ensure that we all continue to provide youth with the tools they need to thrive in adulthood and that youth are at the center of that process. This concludes the overview of the National Youth and Transition Database. Please contact DCF or UWSC if you have questions, comments, or concerns about this presentation or NIDID more broadly, or if you are just interested in learning more. Direct specific questions about outreach and the survey to UWSC and contact DCF for programmatic questions. Thank you.